The origin of the concept of entropy originated with Aristotle and his four element theory. According to Aristotle, everything in the universe, the earth being at the center, was comprised of four elements. The heaviest earth at the center, followed by water, air, and fire being the lightest. Specifically, according to Aristotle, fire could be divided into portions, small or great in size, that exhibit a certain ratio of solid to void. But the greater the portion, the quicker it rises. Next came Arabian chemist Jeber's three element theory, or three principles theory, whereby sulfur, or the stone that burned, represented the principle of combustibility, mercury, the principle of metallic properties, and salt is what gave things their solidity. Next came Swiss chemist Paracelsius's 1524 model, where he added together Jeber's three principles with Aristotle's four element theory to arrive at the view that when wood burned, sulfur represented the flames, mercury was a something that left in the smoke, and salt was what be, would be left over in the ashes. In 1699, German chemist Johann Becher built on Paracelsius's theory by adding or substituting the sulfur principle for what he called terra pinguis, which represented an oily, earth-like substance that was found in the flame that would leave when something burned, leaving behind the ash. In 1703, a student, a student of Better named George Stahl modified his mentor's theory by substituting the oily substance by the name phlogiston, which he called the principle of fire, and added to Becher's theory that when metal burned, or wood burned, or anything burned, phlogiston would leave, leaving behind the calx. In 1789, French chemist Anton Lavoisier conducted experiments where he disproved George Stahl's phlogiston theory by finding that phlogiston or the matter of heat was weightless and therefore conceived a caloric theory where caloric was an indestructible type of particle that when something burned or combusted would leave bodies and go into the cooler regions. Therefore, if a certain amount of a body had a certain number of caloric particles in it, it would have a certain volume delineated by a boundary. But if a certain number of those caloric particles were, remo were removed, it would contract in size. Likewise, the same caloric particles could be added back into the body, causing an expansion in volume. In 1824, French engineer Sadi Carnot a student of the work of Lavoisier's caloric theory, used this model to construct the first outlines of heat engine theory, whereby if a certain amount of water, or for that matter any body, was put in contact with a second body, such as fire, the caloric particles would pass in to the working body, causing it to expand whereby this expansion could be coupled to a piston and cylinder producing work. Then, if the body was put in contact with a cold body, such as water, the caloric particles would leave, thereby causing a vacuum to develop, whereby the working body, shown in blue, would contract, the piston would come down. This was the basis of one's called of one engine cycle. The point about Carnot's model is that he assumed the caloric particles to be indestructible. In other words, heat was something that was indestructible and would not change in quantity. When the working body started out in one configuration, shown in blue, at the end of the cycle, according to Carnot, it read the body or the particles or the atoms and structural arrangement of the molecules of the working body would return to its original position. 
and the amount of heat would be the same. So for example, one caloric particle started at the initial part of the cycle. There would be again one caloric particle at the end and there would be no loss of, the, of heat. In 1850, German physicist Rudolf Clausius set out to show that the basic outline of Carnot's model was correct, except that caloric particles were no longer indestructible, but rather recent experiments would, had shown, specifically by Joule, that heat could be transformed into work, as in the, the steam engine, but also that by the expansion of work, such as the dropping of a weight here, which turned a paddle wheel, the work could be transformed into heat, which would be measured by a thermometer in the liquid by a rise in temperature. Therefore, heat was not simply a caloric particle, but something that transformed into work, or vice versa, work back into heat. Therefore, Clausius developed the model of called entropy, whereby heat was not an indestructible particle, but rather the transformation content of a body. In 1852, William Thompson, an associate of Clausius, so to speak, added to his view of the second law of thermodynamics, or of entropy, that there was a universal tendency to the dissipation of entropy. This is not necessarily a mathematical view of heat, but rather a verbalized view popularized by the layperson in thermodynamics. In 1862, Clausius added to his entropy theory that entropy was a measure of disgregation of the particles of a body, whereby if heat, heat was taken away from body, particles would aggregate, and if heat was added to a body, particles was, would disgregate or spread apart. In 1862, Clausius explained entropy in terms of ice melting. In 1870, Austrian physicist Ludwig Boltzmann popularized the view that entropy has something to do with pouring a tumble of water into the sea, such that the second law has the same truth as the assertion that you can never recover a tumbler of water thrown into the sea. In 1872, Boltzmann developed his famous H-theorem model of entropy, whereby entropy is proportional to the velocity of the particles in the body, whereby the hotter the body, the more spread out is the distribution of the velocities of the body. And if the colder the body, the more contracted and slower become the particles of the body. This is the origination of the S being proportional or entropy proportional to the logarithm of the distribution or states of the working body. In 1876, American engineer Willard Gibbs developed his entropy of mixing model, whereby the spontaneous mixing of gases is driven by an increase in entropy. In 1882, German physician and physicist Hermann Helmholtz explained that, or argued that, the magnitude of entropy must be proportional to the disorder of a body. In 1899, John Perry popularized the view that entropy was a ghost-like quantity, being that entropy could be measured, but only indirectly. Therefore, its understanding of its material nature was difficult to comprehend. In 1901, German physicist Max Planck la launched the quantum revolution, wherein entropy was said to be proportional to the microstates of bodies. And in doing so, and in introduce building on Planck's H theorem that entropy is proportional to 
the W, the multiplicity or Barlichtigkeit, as it's called in German. 1903, American engineer Willard Gibbs set out to write an article on how entropy could explain in terms of mixed upness, but he never finished this article. In 1906, building on the low temperature work of Walter Nurse and how as bodies are cooled towards absolute zero, the particles become more ordered. Planck proposed his principle of elementary disorder, where that at absolute zero, particles have zero entropy. In 1913, Emile Borel introduced the notion that entropy has something to do with typing monkeys, whereby the prop whereby the probability of an entropy decrease is similar to the probability of a monkey typing away on a computer and making a line of the works of Shakespeare. In 1923, American physical chemist Gilbert Lewis, previously spending the last 20 years measuring the entropies of different elements, outlined the procedure on how elements can be assigned in their natural state certain entropy and that reactions or transformations on going from standard state conditions to form new states such as liquids or gases or new molecules through reactions can be assigned different entropies based on the original assignments of entropy and laboratory measurements of the elements in their natural state. In 1922 or in 1928, English physicist Arthur Eddington developed his verbalized argument that entropy represents the arrow of time in his honest book on the nature of the physical world. The same book also introduced the shuffling card model of entropy, whereby the Shuffling of cards supposedly represents entropy increase, which is not necessarily a correct model. In 1929, Leo Slizzard introduced the information model of entropy, wherein Maxwell's demon required a certain amount of energy to measure the information of the particles in two, between two different compartments. In 1948, American electrical engineer Claude Shannon introduced the information theory model of entropy, which has basically nothing to do with thermodynamics. But when he was working on how to mathematically describe the pulses of high and low voltages in telegraph wires shown here, as would be measured by the receiver in a telegraph reception station, he was using logarithms, being that the the highs and lows increase with the an exponential frequency. Therefore, his information was proportional to logarithms of the probabilities of ones and zeros. He was told by American chemical engineer that in thermodynamics they were using similar logarithms to measure what was called entropy, and he told Shannon that he should call his information by the name entropy, sort of as a joke, because as von Neumann stated, in any argument, he would always win in the debate because no one really knows what entropy is. In 1955, entropy was associated with dropping eggs and breaking eggs. In 1961, Peter Landsberg associated entropy with the messing of a child's playroom. And in 1999, into the first decade of the 21st century, American organic chemist argued to convince textbook teachers that entropy should be described as energy dispersal, which is not necessarily a correct model of entropy.